What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 Mercedes-Benz W211 E63 AMG. Today on the W211 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front struts. Now, this car is equipped with aromatic suspension as it is an AMG model. In front of me, we have Bilstein OE units. Both of these are available on FCP Euro. You can buy them as a kit or you can buy them individually. Obviously, if you can, we recommend you do them both at the same time. That way they both operate equally. Now, typically these can last you anywhere from 60 to 160 to 100,000 miles. These units are working around the clock 24 seven, whether you're driving the car or not, by keeping the vehicle level, mainly when it's being parked as well as when you're driving. Now, we are gonna be replacing the front right today. However, the process is gonna be identical for both the driver and passenger side, with the exception of some of the units that are in the way of the top bolts, which we will highlight once we get over to the car. Now, before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this job. For this DIY, we're gonna be using a half inch drive and a three inch drive torque wrench, as well as a half inch drive and three inch drive ratchet. We have a 17 millimeter socket for our lug bolts. Then we have a few more following. We have a 13, a 10 and an eight, as well as a 16. We have two different 21s, one's for a half inch drive, one's for a three eighths drive. We have a small extension. We have our bomb tool for the airline. However, a 10 millimeter wrench or flared wrench will work as well. I'm using a 13 millimeter wrench to break free that airline with that bomb tool. We have a 21 millimeter wrench, a ball joint popper. This is CTA 4013. We have an impact gun, an electric ratchet, and then since we're working on the lift today, we have a screw jack. However, you can substitute that for a regular floor jack. Now we have our tools covered. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, today we are working on the front right, as I mentioned. We're gonna go ahead and start by removing our wheel. We have five 17 millimeter lug bolts we're gonna wanna remove. So using our impact and our 17 millimeter socket, we'll zap those off. All right, with that removed, we have a better view of where we're gonna be working. Now, before we go ahead and detach anything underneath the wheel well, we're gonna go ahead and hop into the underside of the hood and work on disconnecting some electrical connectors from our strut, which is gonna to have to come out, and as well as the airline that goes to our strut. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now next on our list is gonna be working on removing the front half of the fender liner. You have two eight millimeter bolts, five 10 millimeter plastic nuts, and if you have all the hardware on your vehicle, you should also have a plastic rivet to remove. We're missing a couple pieces, so we'll take off what we have, and then uh, we'll start with the two eight millimeter bolts down below. So we'll start with the two eights down at the bottom, just using an eight millimeter socket on my electric ratchet. Now we can switch over to our 10 mil socket. You have one up here, which is missing on our vehicle. You have two by the strut. Our top one is missing. We still have our lower one right here. Then we have two more tens up top. And now we can go ahead and work the fender liner off of our wheel well. With the fender liner removed, now we can see the wiring that we need to disconnect that leads to our strut. So let's go ahead and do that next. So if you follow the line that comes off the bottom of the strut, it feeds behind the sway bar. You can just unclip it from this plastic bracket. Pull this other one towards you. Sorry, this one's a little bit hidden behind the sway bar. Free it up from here. And then Traditionally, there's gonna be a bracket here with some sort of expanding rivet that holds this in place. Ours is already broken, so we're just gonna pull it forward. But once you pop that rivet off, you can access this connector, which usually is clipped to the back of the bracket. To disconnect it, simply push on the tab and pull away. And now that'll come out with our strut when we remove it. Next on our list, we're gonna work on freeing up the strut from the spring arm. We're not gonna remove the bolt, but we are gonna remove the nut. So using a 21 millimeter socket on the impact gun and a 21 millimeter wrench to counter hold, should do the trick. Now with that off, we can go ahead and lower down the car a bit more and work on removing that upper ball joint so we have some more room to remove our strut. 16 millimeter nut, you can use a wrench or a socket. We have a socket on our ratchet right now. We'll try and break that free. With our 16 millimeter nut removed, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our ball joint popper tool and pop that ball joint off of our control arm. Now normally this takes a 24 millimeter socket, but because we are working with it 
upside down. I'll try to squeeze my socket and wrench combo in here. If not, we will try uh, some adjustable pliers. Got the 24 on the ratchet. We'll give this a shot. Now with that removed, we're gonna go ahead and get underneath the hood of the car and work on disconnecting the last bit of the components that hold our strut into the wheel well. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, back up top of things, we are going to start by disconnecting our electrical connector to the strut. To do that, you just simply press on the tab and pull back, similar to the one we did underneath the wheel liner. Set that to the side. Now we're gonna work on undoing our airline. We're gonna be using the airline tool that we showed you at the beginning of the video, the bomb tool. However, a 10 millimeter wrench should do the trick as well if you can squeeze one in there. I would recommend a flared wrench if you can. So we're gonna slip our tool over. It's got the opening for the airline. And then I'm just using a tiny wrench, but this is a 13 millimeter. The tool has two notches for this to go onto, two flat spots. And then just break it free. You can do the rest of it by hand. These are only torqued down to two new in meters or so, so it shouldn't be very tight. You'll hear the air escape. We can leave that tool on there for now, no problem. I'll actually keep the line weighted a bit. Now with that undone, we can go ahead and work on removing this cover just so we have easy access to all three of our 13 millimeter nuts, mainly the one in the back corner. So you can see this one's in a bit of rough shape, but you have three locking tabs that hold it into place. This one's pretty broken and off, but you, the idea being is that you rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise to unlock them. You can simply lift up and remove. Now we have a better view of that back 13 millimeter nut. So let's grab our 13 millimeter socket on an extension and remove all three nuts. I got my 13 on an extension. We're just gonna zap all three off. This plate, you can remove it if you don't want it to fall into the engine bay. Now with our hardware removed, we can go ahead and get back underneath the car and work on pulling out our strut. Now we're just gonna go ahead and finish removing that 21 millimeter bolt. Ours is a little stuck in there. I'm gonna zap it out with the gun. Now it's just a matter of wrestling the strut out. Now with our strut out, we're gonna go ahead and set this on the table and get our new one ready for install. So let's go ahead and set this aside. We'll be right back. Alrighty, now we can go ahead and install our air strut. We have our arm hanging down. We can go ahead and feed it in through the top and then we'll set it over on our spring arm. So similar to how we pulled it out, we're gonna go ahead and feed it back in. Gonna start this nut in by hand for now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up our screw jack underneath so we can line up our holes with our lower spring arm. We'll get our bolt fed in and then we'll go ahead and get the top of the strut fed into the strut tower and then we'll go from there. Just gonna leave that finger tight for now. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my bolt hole for the lower bolt on the strut. Beautiful. Now with that, I'm gonna go ahead and set the car to ride height and we'll go ahead and tighten down the lower bolt, and we'll also tighten down our ball joint end. So let me set up the screw jack and we'll go from there. All right, we have our upper arm at about 90 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and install our nut. I'm just gonna use my 21 millimeter on my electric ratchet to snug it down quickly. Counter hold with a 21 millimeter wrench. And now we're gonna go ahead and torque it down to 165 Newton meters. Beautiful. Now we can work on tightening up our ball joint up top. Now I'm just gonna snug up the 16 really quickly with the electric ratchet. I'm gonna pull down on the arm just to get the tapered end to sit all the way in. And now we can go ahead and torque it down to 20 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. Not a lot. All right, let's mark our point of reference and then we'll hit it with 90. All right, now with that situated, let's head up top, finish hooking up everything up there, including our three 13 millimeter nuts, and then we'll finalize everything with the electrical connectors and our fender liner. So let's get to it. 
Now up top, we can go ahead and reinstall our three 13 millimeter nuts. Don't forget to put your washer and plates back on as well. We're gonna snug them up with the electric ratchet and now we're gonna torque them down to 30 Newton meters. All right, now that we have our shiny new air strut in, we got to go ahead and remove, there's usually a little white fitting on these that protect this brass piece. We're gonna go ahead and remove the one that's equipped in the strut right now. For this, I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to get that off, it's just hand tight. Now with our air strut installed, we can go ahead and reconnect our airline as well as our electrical connector. For the airline, we still have the fitting on with our tool. We're gonna go ahead and get it into place. And this we're just gonna tighten with our fingers using the tool. If not, I would suggest using the wrench and doing it very gently. The actual torque value is something like two Newton meters for it, so it's not a whole lot. Then we can go ahead and plug in our electrical connector. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our cowl piece. You may need to lift up some of the weather strip and just seat it back in place properly. All right, that's gonna situate us up here. Now let's head underneath and wrap up the last few steps. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our wheel liner, but before we do that, we wanna make sure we reconnect our strut if we haven't done so already. So just like we did earlier, we're gonna take our wiring. If you remember, it runs inside of the sway bar. We have a notch in the wiring that keys into this clip that holds it into place. All right, then we're gonna run it. There's one more notch here that holds the wiring in place as well. We'll do that one after we plug it in. For now, let's plug it in. Again, usually a rivet there holding in this tab. Okay, that's on there. We can slide that back to where it should be clipped into. If you remember at the beginning of the video, ours was not clipped into its home. There we go. Clip that line in that little locating tab, or the wire, I'm sorry. And then that can go back there. All right, now with that, we can go ahead and reinstall our fender liner. All right, fender liner, it's just a matter of massaging it back into place. You wanna make sure this outer edge tucks into the inside of your fender and bumper. You also wanna make sure to pull down the inner fender and let the uh, inside spot key itself back Back on the stud, we can reinstall our two eight millimeters at the bottom of the fender liner. Now we're gonna swap over to our 10 millimeter socket and we'll install the rest of our 10 millimeter plastic nuts. You have one that's located here, and one that's located here. Then you have one that's facing up. That's located right there. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall that one. And then in some cases, if you still have it, you have a plastic rivet that secures itself right here beneath these fins on the bumper. Now we can go ahead and throw our wheel back on. Now we're gonna go ahead and snug them up with the gun. And now we will lower the vehicle back on the ground and torque these down to spec. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 135 Newton meters or 100 foot pounds. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, a really straightforward job doing the Airstra on the W211. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today or the specific videos you want to see on the W211, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.